Here is a great piece of original art from 1918, so wow, and from a legendary yet overlooked illustrator, Gustav Tengren. He was Swedish and made his fame in America in a couple of different ways. Uh, the Little Golden Books were a standard of children's literature in America, and he was a big part of that from 1942 to 1962, including this one here, which I don't remember. I don't think I ever had it read to me. But anyway, uh, The Pokey Little Puppy is the single best-selling hardcover children's book of all time. Who knew? But his biggest impact in America and the world was working with the Walt Disney Company. Here's a 9 meter tall bronze statue, obviously of Pinocchio, uh, in honor of Gustav back in his hometown in Sweden. And look how fantastic this concept art for Pinocchio is. So yeah, they brought him in in 1937. Walt Disney loved his art. It's very folktale inspired. They brought him in uh, right at the time they were going to work on their first full-length feature, which was Snow White. And the Seven Dwarves, instant classic, of course. Here's more great concept art, obviously this time from that movie. And this is the kind of talent that made him Walt Disney's chief illustrator during a time, you know, kind of a golden age for them, of course, but what's also known as the golden age of American animation. So we're talking the movies we mentioned, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Pinocchio, but also Fantasia, Bambi, Really, really memorable stuff, clearly. And this is an artist who, again, despite not being a household name, uh, left a huge imprint on popular culture. There's no telling how many younger artists he inspired. Now then, let's move on to what we're looking at. It's pretty cool. I got to see this in person. Honestly, I didn't realize his importance before I did see this in person. And as you saw in the video, this is a full-size painting. It was large. 26 inches long, 18 inches wide, but it was made for a storybook illustration. This is one of the really cool things. I've done past videos on these when I've gotten to see them, this kind of a thing. You'd have uh, these really talented artists make these large paintings, uh, and sometimes some of the ones I've seen in person are extremely large, not to hang up on a wall, not to go in a museum or anything like that, not even to sell, just for the purpose of a much smaller reproduction. And this work here is depicting Spanish arms and armor. I like seeing the brushwork uh, real up close, and yeah, I figured this was perfect for my uh, weapons and art playlist. Here's his signature, obviously, and pretty cool. This is from a very influential artist. And we get to see his take on one country's distinctive arms and armor from one point in time, of course. And you don't have to be an expert on arms and armor to at least get a bead on what kind of time frame we're talking about here, especially because of this helmet. This is a Morio helmet. And you don't need to be an expert in arms and armor to know that this type of helmet is strongly associated with the conquest of the Americas and the conquistadores. Now, that being said, this helmet was invented after the conquest of the major civilizations in Central and South America. But it did still come along in time to absolutely be part of the conquest of the Americas. It wasn't used just there either. I mean, once the design started, it caught on in other places, as you can imagine. Oliver Cromwell's forces, uh, for instance, used it. Uh, but back to the Americas, uh, this video made me think of this movie here, Dances with Wolves, in this great scene when the North American, Native American chief, pulls out one of these helmets something handed down to him from the time when the Spanish first invaded the Americas. But let's get back to our painter and his painting. So here's some of the other weapons. We've got an axe, a spear, shield. Notice the shield seems to have blood on it on the left. And it's neat how they're done in that painterly style, as it's known. Like, we can actually see the brush strokes. It's not trying to look photorealistic. And speaking of not being photorealistic, let's look at some of Tengren's, uh, some more of his fairy tale art. And of course, you can't have a Scandinavian artist doing folktale fairy tale art uh, without trolls. Back to the painting, here's the suit of armor. We really hadn't focused on that. I'm not sure how historically accurate he was trying to be here. Uh, you know, painters have a long history of not caring about historical accuracy. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure he did some research. The shield is interesting in that respect because it has that spike. 
And it actually only took me a second to find a picture online, an example of what seems to be an authentic one. It's from a legitimate site, Alamy. And they specifically call it a Spanish shield of the mid-16th century. So right on the money. There's the spearhead, of course. And uh, let's go back to Tengren as an artist. He was heavily influenced by Arthur Rackham from England, who was a legendary figure in kind of folk and fairy tale art. Here's one work by him. And funny enough, I'm using one of his this one right here, for my next book cover. As you can see, the fox in global folktales, but I'll have to make a video on that once it's ready. So here's one final static look, and uh, then the video top to bottom shot of it again, real quick. So yeah, from a highly influential artist, whom most people have never heard of, uh, I happen to get to see this in person, 1918. A great work of art, and kind of an oddity, because it did not fit in with his specialty, or what he's most famous for. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.